Hello and welcome back to the LCS 2020 Summer Playoffs. FlyQuest took game one against Evil Geniuses. EG with side selection have picked blue side. We'll see what the comps look like here in game two of Champ Select. And Kobe and I wanted to talk very briefly about the team comp of this game. I've seen some, some comments online. Alice has talked about it that, oh, why is EG running a dive composition against so much anti-dive from FlyQuest? And by the time EG picked their Galio, we saw Caitlyn, Volibear and Thresh. That is just like generically good League of Legends champions, and they had to call their shot. Swain Shen came up and it's like, well, we're anti dive, sucks to be Galio. Yeah, that's why I think more credit should be given to the side of FlyQuest for good drafting on blue side in blue five, uh, four, five there in answering immediately. Once they saw Galio, they're like, all right, good, we get the anti dive. We have the deep counter pick Swain plus Shen uh, for extra anti dive and yep. then they don't care what the last pick from EG would be. So really well done by FlyQuest from blue side. Now they're on red side where they get to save a counter pick. Um, and I'm excited to see what they can pull out. Uh, generally, I have liked Solo actually getting the counter picks because Power of Evil uh, has so many blind pick options. And even with teams throwing four, five bands at him, um, he still is always uh, you know, able to perform on you know, some sort of high damage AP threat from the mid lane. So yeah. far, EG not throwing any bans at him and taking out uh, you know, a couple of the priority picks. Santorin's Trundle, obviously, very closely associated uh, with him for the entire year, Troll King, uh, plus the Solo's Renekton, where he literally had a 1v9 game on uh, and yeah. won them the entire uh, set. They, they've moved up the Renekton ban, and on the other side, FlyQuest have moved up the Gangplank ban here. Also, unable to first pick Caitlyn, they throw the Caitlyn ban in there as well. So EG grabs set uh, across all the regions who are in playoffs right now. Grave set and Caitlyn. 100% pick ban across the LCS and LPL, and so those have remained fairly high priority. FlyQuest grab Ash for themselves here as the set is in there. We'll see if they're going to go ahead and take this Graves or something else as well. But FlyQuest get uh, now two games in a row, the highest priority AD carry. You know, Caitlyn on the one side, and then with Caitlyn banned, Ash here. And especially if you have Wild Turtle. Wild Turtle, his accuracy with global ultimates has been a strong point for his whole career. And this man has had one of the longest League of Legends careers yeah. of players playing. Um, we do get the trifecta. Now, this is a very common three champion pick. Yes, Zaya and Rakan were designed for each other, um, but Set is a really, really good uh, supplemental champion that's very often picked with Zaya Rakan uh, because Set flanks, Set ultimates, uh, AOE groupings work so well with the speed of Rakan. It's, it's, a very, it's very easy to AOE CC lock them for big Zaya blade callers. Gonna be a fun one to watch for there. Yeah, I, I like this comp a lot. It's gonna be a lot of damage. Bang is gonna be on his first Zaya pick of the split. Finally off of Felios, off of Ezreal. Going for this one now instead. Callista was up. It was banned by FlyQuest in the first game. And that one's gonna be left on the table here. We'll see how much Bang can do alongside Zazel. Of course, Rakan got several buffs over uh, recent history as well. So we'll see if that can look good for him. And now we get to wait around for the next little bit as the second phase of Vixen Bands come through. FlyQuest not convinced Set will be a top laner, throwing in a Rumble Band to complement the Gangplank. And Corky again out on the Evil Geniuses side. Yep, trying to take away a few of the PoE scaling champions. With Mordekaiser top already and a Volibear jungle, um, they, they are going to have you know decent a AP threat from the top side. So already top itemization for Oni could look pretty focused on magic resistance. Um, trying to think about things around Mordekaiser though is an interesting thing. When you see Mordekaiser that early, then you have to start worrying about, um, you know, you don't really want to pick champions that are rely a lot on synergies as he can break those synergies so easily. Um, you also don't want to get yourself into a place where you need to get dragon steals because Mordekaiser just easily denies those by ulting the jungler. Um, so generally, I would want to have more dragon priority, more uh, you know, focus there as well. So I'm looking at solo queue data for bad matchups for Mordekaiser, and one that sticks out to me is Akali. Uh, Fiora as well, and Jax. Three heavily favored 1v1 matchups where Mord doesn't have the power to beat them in the one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Huni seems like the kind of player who wants to play those kinds of champions, so maybe we'll see it come through. The Gragas comes in as well. Another champion that was buffed maybe a couple months ago. Uh, bigger AP ratios yeah. on some of his spells. Uh, and, I mean, I've seen Gragas Please play top me. and mid. 
please tell me this is a mid lane Gragas. Please, please, please. I really want to see a full AP Gragas one shot. Honestly, when it when it was the norm, people hated it. Uh, but it's been so long since we've got a yeah. taste of a really well played Gragas combo one shot. Um, obviously, it could very uh, easily be support, um, and this is definitely something that Ignar would play. Uh, so I, I'm kind of edging more towards it is support Gragas, uh, you know, for the for the body slam for the interrupt there. Also, uh, ultimate super good at that disruption, but. Yep. Uh, since since you're mentioning you know the AP buffs that were made to it, I I really would uh, hope for it. It's the chances are like two percent though because um, you know it, it was blinded first too. Yeah, of course. It, it seems maybe more like support Gragas down there, but we'll yeah, see what the last pick's going to be. What's going to come alongside this composition? Cassidin is the hover right now. Is the pick into Azir moving over to Syndra instead? Syndra was nerfed in 10.16, 20 less Q damage at max rank. Uh, is definitely a pretty meaningful base damage hit. So uh, still saying, no, 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 this is a really important matchup into Azir. Hecarim, by the way, not favored into Mordekaiser. Uh, loses a lot of win rate in that matchup specifically. Uh, so another one where game long, Hecarim is not favored into his matchup. This was also true into Shen. Not saying the 1v1 is bad, but as a game state, uh, Hecarim does not typically like being against that champion, right? Diving a Shen ult, not great. Hecarim maybe isolating him in the team fights so who can't be the frontline diver can also be problematic here. So I do want to see what happens. I still like Hecarim, just maybe not as much with these matchups. Yeah, and FlyQuest, I think, have done a good job of stacking their answers for the Rakan since Zyra Rakan is shown so early. Um, you know, they pick up the Syndra. I always like that as a mid lane option into Rakan later on. Uh, your Scatter of the Week is so good versus the Rakan. And the Rakan really does have to get uh, kind of fed to uh, to have the answers, to have the money to make things like Zonias and stuff, to to immune Syndra ults and, and avoid getting 100% uh, bursted and yep. it puts more pressure on the Rakan using control wards, using vision to find really good flanks and more, uh, you know, surprise positions. Uh, the Gragas is such a good answer. Uh, always love to see it um, with the body slam and the flash plays that you can pull out. Yeah, exciting stuff right here. Um, I want to take a step back and look at season 2020 because I think my favorite change of the season was the support item changes where you buy tier one and then you buy real items from there. Like, you can just actually play the atomization game instead of upgrading to face the mountain and whatever else. And so this is a season where you can more easily get to Zonia's or Stopwatch or whatever else. Still agree with you that it is hard to be Rakan in a world with Mordekaiser and Syndra trying to kill you instantly. Uh, and hey, there's even this uh, uh, Gragas down in the support role who's going to make it difficult as well. So excited to see how this game's going to play out. It's going to be a lot of fun here as FlyQuest bring out some more champions we don't see very often with Ignar pulling out the Gragas. Okay, let's see. No sweepers for anybody. So probably, uh, you know, no weird stuff with the delayed invades or anything. Uh, should be defensive wards trying to cut off both of the... Oh, just kidding. As soon as I speak, <laughs> Ignar body slam over the top. He gets the ward and he slips in behind the red buff. He can go right behind Zazel. You want to bait and you show in the river uh, for Zazel and then you both go at the same time. Ooh, here they go, they're gonna push him in. Zazel's gonna run right Slam. into this champion. Knocked up, oh stunned, my. goodbye. Ignite is on anyway. What a absolutely beautiful level one game plan from FlyQuest. Glorious stuff right there. PoE already has 400 bonus gold. And those are always the types of things that, that Ignar likes to go for, too. You know, even even if he's the Rakan, and he'll, like, double you over the back of the Dragon Pit to try and pull that off. But preying on defensive openings, because so many teams have the same defensive screening openings, uh, just watching the entrances from the river. Gragas has not been picked in quite a long time as a support, uh, and Ignar is able to get just over the back of the Dragon Pit, um, making sure, of course, you want to go over the upper kind of part of the back of the dragon pit so that the person in Tribrush can't see you. Ignar did just that. And we saw all how it went down. Perfect timing on the pincer. He doesn't show until he's in range for the body slam. And that is critical because it gives enough time for Santorin to get there with the Volley Bear stun to follow it up and have just enough damage with Ignite to take him down, even going over the wall. All right, beautiful start right there. Of course, anyone with presence of mind gets 100 free mana. That's going to make Turtle's lane a little bit easier, as that's the typical rune on Ash down there. So it's going to be nice. It's an extra volley and a half in the laning phase. Mm. Early Hawkshot, as expected as well, is going to try to track out what Svenskeren's doing in the jungle. They'll see red is gone. They'll see he's doing red to blue to romp <laughs> you love top it. side. <laughs> hey, how's it mode. going, friends? 
As a juggler playing against Ash, instant emote. Great, I love it. Mm, the, the drone is over my head, giving away all information to my opponents, uh, allowing Santorin to know that he can go for another gank uh, or just pass around through mid, try and get some deeper vision down. Yep. So, Kobe, I got to point out, though, as much as junglers complain about that, Santorin got a first blood literally right now against Ash. Like, like, at this point in time, Golden Glue was dead, and he was against Ash. Blame the Ash. Better, you need better hawk yeah, shots there. Better, better hawk shot wins, Where's I guess. Ho I mean. Better hawk shot wins. <laughs> well, meanwhile, hey, look, Sven Skarin's top lane at 313. Great flash by Solo gets him away from the rest of the stuns, but there's still a summoner spell down. All right, top pressure there. Still finds its mark. Uh, and again, the most common top laner uh, taunt right there, or emote comes out <laughs> uh, as he doesn't want to get camped, and he starts to get a little bit angry. But bottom side should be Santorin's area to play. I think EG should be well aware, though, uh, that the map uh, you know is split. They trade Scuttle Crab, so Zazel and Bang able to slip their way out, no problem. Not a big deal right there. Golden is going to get the first shove in. 29 CS, pretty good. Only drops two on the first five waves. We'll see how much PUE can get on the back side here. Yeah, so you, can't, take his camp. you can't do anything here. Even though you have, you know, ooh, super sneaky position, I'm behind them. If your opponent mid laner is pushed up like that, you know, Azir yeah. gets the shove onto Syndra. As much as you're super sneaky there and you've been able to, you know, get behind him in the brush unaware, there's nothing you can do because your mid laner is so far away. You lose that 2v2. You have to run, uh, you know, for the hills. And it goes yep. for the recall. Senskaren does take the early, very small uh, CS lead, finished up his Raptors. Is a little bit delayed on the recall, though. So Centaurin with the early upgrade into. Um, Smite here, so he will be able to have a little bit better chase. All right, who needs burns through his mana pool there, gets a deep ward and sees the Krugs respawn top side, so he'll know about some of the jungle pathing down the line from Santorin. Both are in level four, top lane farm pretty close between the two. We'll see if Solo is punished for Flash being down, otherwise it was a gank that meant ultimately nothing. It's not going to change the 1v1 all that much. And Huni actually going for a somewhat more defensive build. You see he's not building components of a Triforce. He's going early Spectre's Cowl to be tanky against Solo in the matchup, and we'll see where it goes from there. And like I was talking about in Champ Select, since they have, uh, you know, Volibear does a decent amount of AP damage and AP mid too, the whole top side of the map is AP, so Magic Resist uh, is super easy for him to buy, uh, straight from just seeing those, you know, early first three picks. Yeah. Also could easily be not a Spectre's Cowl, but ha like part of Phage and part of Merc Treads, and he'll do the rest later on. Uh, right now, Santorin walking up right through a control. We're going to go ahead and knock that one down. Solo feeling comfortable in the trade as his jungle is behind him. Huni will be back and of course, did burn the TP to get back to lane. Solo did the same with his arm guard, so he's actually got kind of the item that he wants for his matchup. Obviously, Set doesn't deal magic damage either, so uh, very efficient for his side of the map. I'm really curious to see how the Syndra plays out too, because already Power of Evil is struggling, and this is 10-16 where the extra Syndra uh, nerf did also come in. You know, your yeah. your max rank on your Dark Sphere is pretty huge to take 20 damage off that thing. Um, and Power Vival not hesitating to go back to it, but already struggling a little bit early with his ear pushing. And now we just start to see the roams from mid as a 1v1 fight here in the death realm. Rolls in from Solo. Huni's down to 400 HP already. Feels the good about that one. And then starts backing off. Doesn't know if other champions are coming. Santorin calls that Svenskaren is on the way up and one level ahead. So nice smite. He grabs that one. But here comes Ignar. The squad is around. Flag will want this fight. Huni comes in, gets a couple of blast oh. plants. And now that's a bunch of damage over the top. PoE gets the kill on a Huni blast plant away a double kill coming through for the center the squad roamed up in time ignar was there for the combo and FlyQuest start off three and zero yeah look like et are kind of distracted thought they were like playing nexus blitz for the scuttle crab race or something there as they are focusing on it it's been scared uh does get the scuttle crab but fly quest with the earlier roam ignar big boy here comes in on the gragas gets that body slam flash right in time they get the first blood I mean, they get the extra extra two kills because they had already gotten the early first blood yeah. with his uh, body slam over the dragon. This this Gragas pick just making all the plays for FlyQuest. Here's another look at it. The race up the river to join the Scuttle Crab. Power of Evil and Ignar, you can see, they forced Zazel out, even though he had been there almost the same time. Uh, and on your screen, of course, there's a recalling Azir. Since Power of Evil is there and uh, EG mid laner not going to roam up, Easy win for FlyQuest. They have the extra numbers advantage. You may have gotten a Scuttle Crab, but we got the kills. 
Yeah, it was interesting. It was like very, very standard uh, support roam timings. Is, is the first recall at six minutes in the bot lane is when yep. you grab your BF sword or Zerk Greaves. The support say, I'm going to grab boots and go top lane. See you later. And so they are both there. But this time around, I mean, you mentioned PoE. How's Cinder going to do? This time around, he had the push first in mid, right? He was able to go and Golden Blue stuck in lane. And that was the difference. He got those two kills. He's a 3 0 Syndra. And with a bunch of extra ability power, you've just made up. With a blasting one, you have made up for the Syndra Q nerf automatically. Yep. <laughs> He was the recipient of also the bonus from the, the first blood bonus. So it's yep. even jam-packed extra gold in these kills. Control Ward goes down on the Rift Herald here, though. Let's see, because already um, we do have Santorin moving up. And once again, they can play off of this Syndra. There, there's only an amp tome in the pockets of Golden Glue. He's got very defensive itemization with the early Merc Treads. Yeah, Black was feeling pretty comfortable. Level lead for Solar right now. Huni's not having a good time. Sisko gonna walk in for a smite, a couple of punches, then he gets ulted, so this is the battle. Asher not going to land, but Solo pushing Sven Skaren out, waiting to get him maybe dunked back in, but he's not gonna have the play. It's Black was able to take down the Rift Herald. Good job by Santorin. Claims this one. Looks to get some more gold for this the team as they are up eleven hundred right now, and they're gonna come in for a Herald charge in most cases. This one is looking really, really one sided here in the favor of FlyQuest Freak. It's going to be difficult for for EG to really make this big comeback. They're they're going to have to wait a while too before this Azir starts to come online. Three people around Golden Glue. Ooh, Cask almost knocked him into the team. That's a Centauran stun and a PoE stun and a kill. If he was a little bit farther forward, so nice try. But Golden Glue will live. Will keep his 10 CS lead. But of course, the entire squad has to weather a very small or actually a pretty meaningful gold deficit at under 10 minutes in. Will be a finished Kyle for Huni, so very much building defensive for his lane for now. There's a lot of things they have to worry about too. With, with PoE, the Syndra getting all of these early kills, it's going to make Zazel's job specifically very difficult. Uh, he does have the Merc Tread, so that that helps a bit with the you know counterplay from Scattered of the Week. But if you just get ulted, the uh, fully completed Luden's Echo should come in for Power of Evil. And that is going to be that. Dragon has started up, though, on the recall of Power of Evil. Nice. And since this time around, there is a mid difference of EG with Golden Glue still here. That should be easy objective for EG. All righty, nicely done. Yeah, bot lane, mid lane, both recalling makes it uh, pretty simple to walk into the river and grab that one. So Evil Genius is at least fighting back with a neutral objective. No turrets to fall just yet, but we know Rift Herald can make that one happen for too terribly long. No turret plates taken from either team. All five up on all three turrets uh, for both teams there. We'll see when a push finally does come through. Zazel uh, got demolished in the bot lane once, but that plate is still alive. Ignar might want to go in, but not just yet. Level six, of course, up across the board. No ulti right now for Ignar as he burned it in the mid lane, but has that about 20 seconds, and that might signal a play. Yeah, I'm also curious to see if we actually have uh, the fight on the bottom side. You know, the combination with Ash and Gragas, you can you can devastate somebody really quickly if you if you're targeting the Rakan. Um, you know, obviously Bang has Zaya ultimate, so it's kind of difficult to to go for him first. But uh, if Zazel ever gets a little bit too far forward, you saw there Ignar is ready to punish him, and that's why Sven Skaren actually slips in for a, a lane gank here, waiting for the aggression. Just gets the ult away. He's going to be stunned at the very least. A lot of CC comes across, and he does have to burn the ult to get away. He would have died without it, without casting it early. So out he goes. Ulti burn doesn't mean too much. Checking in on Solo, of course, was not punished for the early gank onto him. The flash was burned. He's just lived since then. A lot of early armor stacking for Solo. Up to the uh, Ninja Tabby now here as well. Maybe a little bit too armor stacked, but it's fine. He's doing just, just easily well in that top lane matchup. Meanwhile, nothing really uh, you know, comes of the of the lane gank here. Obviously, they saw Santorin go for the play on Dehuni. But since Karen knew uh, there was no possibility of their opponents starting to play aggressive, Ignar and Turtle are like, okay, our jungler's top side. They're making a play on the enemy top laner. No reason to overextend. But now, they do. Stun. That is body slam flash. That is an ulti in there as well. Here comes a dunk on the top side. It's going to be a fight breaking out in the bottom river. And right now, it's a big route. It's a whole ton of damage. And PoE is shut down. One for zero EG, traded right back away. Now here comes Mordekaiser, ults in, wants to take a kill. And it's Golden Glue very low on health. He's going to drop down a wild turtle, bank force a flash away. Zazel trying to run for his life, but does not have the escape. One more auto will kill him. 
The double kill comes through for Wild Turtle. Now Hootie is forced to run away. He's running as fast as he can. He is slow. He is trying to make it out right there. Solo, can he get the claw back? It's going to be up soon. He finds Bang, and he finds his kill. And now under the turret, Hootie is running out of life. He's running out of time, and he's going to drop down as well. Turtle on a killing spree. It's 8-1. to one. FlyQuest are smashing evil geniuses. And Santorin also has the Rift Herald. They could have waited a little bit to get off some of the plates first, so it would be... Uh, you know, optimal and and get it much quicker, but they just pop it really quickly here for the instant gold. So Scarin has already reset and is coming back. Everybody just gets their recalls off. But man, the Ash Arrow into Gragas that we were just talking about, that initiation uh, to start it all off. Yes, there is a good scramble from EG and they focus Power of Evil. They get Power of Evil's flash and they kill him. But Solo coming in on the Mordekaiser with the ultimate, Immediately kills Golden Glue, then coming out of the ultimate, chases everybody off. Scatter here for EG. Uh, Zazel obviously can't get over the back of the Dragon Pit. Huni had finished the Hex Drinker, so the shield saves him for a little while, but Ignar just walks right up on the Gragas, and Solo still enough health to tank multiple tower shots. Finishing up that dive and boosting FlyQuest up here. Only 13 minutes in. Power people though, no flash still. Fear into charge. This is what EG wanted out of the pick. Get out of the lane, get into mid, insta-kill a flashless champion. Those are the targets they wanted, and at least a second kill on the board, but there's still a 2,800 gold lead to come back from. That is going to be hard for EG to do. Focus here on to Power of Evil is definitely keeping that Syndra down. That got the early three kills, but look at the cost here. Bang now with the next three kills off of that team fight. The Ashes is just rising up as the big carry in the Syndra's place. Uh, good job by EG to punish the flashless Power of Evil since he had to burn his flash in the last fight. Um, but now they're going to have to worry about the Ash. Yep, so Wild Turtle going to be probably pretty good here. Nice little chunk by Solo, trying to punish CS best he can. Cooney just kind of does the drive-by Q and leaves. The next Drake spawns in 30 seconds here. EG are poised. They're in position. They got the Scuttle Crab down there as well. A Control Ward, some Ward Sweeping. Nicely done by them. Ignar waiting around. Mm. Golden Glue, of course, here now as well, and Turtle's going to be under his turret. Logan at the top lane is running around. Solo and Huni both flashless. So the fact that Solo is moving, the fact that he had lane pressure means it's going to be an obvious 5v4 to play for the Drake. EG trying to make a play. Ignar's on a ward. He doesn't know. Here comes the play. The shuffle back in. Absolutely beautiful stopwatch. Should not buy enough time, but the team's coming back around. Arrow's going to land. Bank is killing Ignar. A lot of damage coming through on a uh, Santor to get the dunk. Actually gets the trade kill. And now Zazel is out of health. Flyquest collapse and win the 4v4. Going to get two for one. Now, to be fair, Santorin has basically no health left. Spice going to be hard to land, but Sven Skarin doesn't want to be in this fight. He wants Stunned something well. Wild Turtle. Big damage right here. Big stun. Turtle's running out of HP. They are going to get that kill. So it is a two for two long term, but the Drake was traded back. And to his credit, Huni is able to shove in top lane and deny some farm from Solo. So a Drake is essentially traded for some minion waves as the end result of that fight. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think that EG should chain team fights. They try and go for the pick because Ignar's sitting there on the ward, and Ignar kind of realizes something's up at the last second, pops his, uh, his uh, sweeper, but uh, immediate engage there from EG. You can see them over the wall. Ignar's like, wait a second, they all went to the river. Where are they? Uh, there must be a ward here. Azir over the wall, but Golden Glue, once you use all your cooldowns like that uh, as Azir, uh, he has no way to jump back over the wall, no escape. And they get chunked down immediately as Wild Turtle just collapses with Santorin for the quick double kill answer. Uh, even though Ignar does get picked off with the vision discrepancy, it's still the extra ones for FlyQuest. Yes, of course, Huni did get to push on the top side, um, but they, he was unable to get the entire turret for himself. And now he's swapped down to the bottom side uh, to try and relieve some of that pressure as well. Okay, so 3,000 gold is now the lead. FlyQuest have tied the Drakes. They've got the blue on a golden glue. His Azir carried them in their last win over Golden Guardians over in Week 9. Part of the reason they got to uh, the spot they, uh, you know, were able to secure the upper bracket spot there instead of waiting down to the bottom side where 100 Thieves are instead. But to 1 and 2 Stark, that's a pretty big gold deficit, so EG can have a hard time with this one. Uh, still waiting to see as the farm's coming through on all sides. EG fighting for the second Rift Herald, not as good as the first but may still find them a turret in the end of the day. Centaur running around, level 10 onto him. Golden Blue wants to zone him out. Sven Skarin will have the equal level smite. Will he walk in for this one? Looking around, this could be an easy one picked up. Now the cast 
brings in Golden Glue, the charge over the top though, the arrow's gonna maybe find a stun. And how about the charge, how about the knockup, how about the fact that Golden Glue may just live, and in fact he will, a one for zero so far, as Bang gets the damage, Ignar forced out, Svenskaren is in danger, he's in the Death Realm solo, should find this kill, a dunk to buy some time, so they'll still find oh. it, and a second, he was delivered to Golden Glue, he was delivered that second kill, a knockup for Zazel running away for his life, will stay alive there as well, but I believe that's a two for one, the fight still goes the way of FlyQuest. Mordekaiser this week, Freak, is just looking like a Hulk. Solo comes out of that ultimate. He was like, thank you, Sven Skarin, for the ult over. He can then Q flash cleaning up Golden Glue. I was starting to have some hope for EG there. With the evasive maneuvers they pulled off early, Golden Glue survives. But as soon as Solo ults, you know, he's going to be able to get his kill on the Sven Skarin. Then you get to another one surviving at full HP here. Also with the pressure, can just bully Hooney out. He can even walk up to the turret, take this one himself, gets the local gold easily, and he's jacked. And Turtle is forced to flash away. Golden Glue chunks him pretty low. Did have ult held it, I think, expecting an early flash. It came out, honestly, in a spot where Golden Glue, if he had pressed R right away, would have gotten it. End of the day, Turtle lives, and it's going to be Herald Summit in the mid lane. Now, EG, do they feel safe enough to keep going? They know Turtle is flashless. They know Turtle doesn't have arrow up either. So no real threat on the front line, as they will get the charge, they will get the kill, and EG will find their own turret kill. Meanwhile, Botlin is pushed in. Power of Evil shoved that wave. Didn't go for the turret damage, though. He actually stuck to look around for wards. Uh, Turtle um, just going to sit back in mid and get some farm. PUE should be finishing off this turret, though, and it means Flyquest will be 2-1 to one up in turrets and 12-5 to five up in kills. Yeah, with the ward and with the safety of Gragas Volibear walking down to guard Power of Evil, he can safely move up for that gold. Uh, one of the best things about Kragas is the extra priority put on the body slam. You can interrupt uh, most other dashes. But here's another look at it. Fireview had flashed forward uh, to, to dodge that wall, and then he gets charmed up. He gets immediately locked down, so it looks good for Evil Geniuses here. But then Solo walks in. They get the big burst onto Sven. Then he ults Sven. He's going to come out with the extra stats. EG waiting around uh, Golden Glue. There's no hesitation there from Solo. Q flash on Mordekaiser immediately ends his life and allows FlyQuest actually map pressure coming out of that fight, even though their mid laner went down first. And look at that, the gold lead. It's growing and growing and growing. 4,000 gold in under 20 minutes. That is a slaughter of a game. This is FlyQuest completely taking over. They are completely demolishing. Who doesn't have any damage? He's got an adaptive helmet, a hex drinker. They don't really have much except for Bang and Golden Loot trying to be the back line. Bang himself still waiting to finish his second item, though. He's only on Zeal right now. Just not a lot of consistent damage. We need to look at Turtle, 5, 1, and 4 on the Ash. He's already got Ruin King Hurricane. That's going to be just great. Huni wants in, can't find it. Pee kites away safely enough. Mid lane under a bit of fire as the Azir turret keeps the minion wave under control. EG looking to play around this Drake. It's spawning in two seconds, and mid lane will be pushed first by EG. They can take the room first as well. EG. Got a pretty big deficit here, and the top lane tower is really low, so they could trade away second dragon, not fight another team fight, and try and trade for some extra gold from you know top tower, some extra you know pressure around the possible Baron setups for later in the game to help them scale up a bit. But they actually looks like they want to fight the dragon. They set it up themselves. FlyQuest, see if they can go for the initiation. Here we go, some of the front line. Team fight begins. Huni pulled right in the Death Realm already. The dunk backwards in, and Santorin is just sitting around trying to take a whole bunch of damage. Knock up there from Zazel. Big punch comes in. Volibear barely lives. Huni running away with 5 HP there as well, so the re-engage comes in. Easy smite. Gonna be grabbed by Solo, though, and look at that! Three kills in already! Good! By evil geniuses, call it the everything. It's over. This is FlyQuest with control of the map, and they're running a Baron. I was trying to give him options, Freak. I was like, okay, that top tower, that's real low. Maybe you go for that instead. How about not fighting here? And FlyQuest are happy to take it. Solo comes out of that Death Realm after chasing Mooney over the back of the Dragon Pit with you know, 100 HP. He just goes right through every champion and the dragon itself coming out of there. Mordekaiser go brr, indeed. Baron got <laughs> picked up. And FlyQuest, as you said, will look to cruise here through this series. Looking like game number two might be a quick one. Let's take another look. The Ash Arrow from Turtle right onto Huni on the engage allows them another early chunk onto Huni, so Solo's gonna win that. Uh, looking at the other part of the 4v5 uh, though, Sven Skarin uh, with the ultimate inside, Zazel going in for the lockdown onto Volibear, 
still gets the ult out. So Santorin able to survive for himself, getting the extra HP, and then Solo uh, comes out of it. And he got a lot of those with the passive burn then, because he was in Sonya's. Yep. <laughs> yep. And Leandro's helping out as well. Well done to him. Yeah, good and passive. Ooh. Nice passive. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. That's well done right there. Huni, uh, making Hecarim look balanced, man. I don't know. I think if you're going to play a full tank in top lane, when you see pretty much the entire composition, I don't think Hecarim's the pick, I'll be honest. Uh, it's yeah, not looking he... great into this one. I, you know, like, if you're playing the champ at all, why are you building him full tank when you can just play Maokai? Is a question I legitimately have for Huni's champ select here. I think this is actually a problem, something that EG needs to fix because they are staring down the barrel of a 3-0 sweep. They are about to lose game two. They had a close game one, but couldn't hold it on. And this one, it is looking all worse for wear. So, Baron buff on, three minutes on the Drake. How much sieging can we get out of FlyQuest? Stun on Huni, that is a flash stun, that is a kill, that is goodbye. And again, the tank drops, the stun of the front line. Sven Skarin's gonna drop as well. He gets a shield, it's not gonna matter, he is gonna die. Double kill again for PoE. The pullback, goodbye to Zazel. Solo kill for Solo himself. He is godlike on this Mordekaiser. And now, the turret is gone. Bane can try to run, he can get a root. I don't think anyone cares. He's gonna drop as well. Four unanswered kills, ready to push into the base. Flyquest are like, who said we're a slow team? We could easily just keep split pushing with our Baron. Mordekaiser had a free lane bottom lane. That was a 4v5 mid. They're like, you know what? Let's just force five on four. Start channeling the teleport. Boom, Whoop. they get every kill and the game. 24 minutes in, the inhib is cracked. Eight seconds on most of the respawn. Timer's been wave into the base. Can EG try to fight? There's a chance they live. I don't know if they ever win, but they can certainly try. Ignar knocks them back. There's the combo. There's the pull in. There's a dunk back. Huni's going to burn the zone. But that's going to be a kill on a Svenskaren. One on a Huni as well. Turtle stays alive. Only one death this game. Zero for Santorin. Zero, zero, 018. The ultimate support, <laughs> MVP, carry performance jungler. That is what you want to see. A knockup on Ignar is not going to matter. KDAs if you really want them, but that is the Nexus falling. 24-26 the game time. FlyQuest, by far the better team in game two. Well, it yeah. is looking like yesterday's game was closer than this one. <laughs> or yesterday's yep. series is going to be closer yep. than this one. FlyQuest coming out here in game number two. They don't lose any steam. They push so quickly ahead, winning so many of these early skirmishes. Um, I mean, really good coordination that they've shown through this series. They already were going to be one of the super scary teams, you know, looking looking towards the upper bracket. You know, yeah. coming in as a, as a third seed. Obviously, they are heavily favored here over EG. But this is looking like a real statement game. Plus the fact that they're also showing some new champions. Teams that have to worry about, you know, possible Swain picks countering here into things like Galio and dive compositions. FlyQuest are looking real good, my friend. Yeah, and that's impressive. That is, I think, one part, the power preparation, where, you know, again, I like the Hecarim was prepared. I think it's a good pick. I think it's cool. We'll, we'll, I'll get off that one for now. But the I fact mean, that they said, look, what what is Golden Glue's most played champion, or what is he going to play a fair bit of? There's only one Galio pick, actually, so far in the regular season. They said, you know what? This is a common style for them. We think they're going to play something a bit supportive in the mid lane. So let's go ahead and get Swain ready as the counter pick. I don't know if that was because of EG, if it was because Pee-wee thought it was a good champion overall, but it was a great matchup. They dismantled the mid lane, and then everyone else firing on full cylinders. We, of course, get the chance to reverse sweep. We get to see if EG can have something else prepared, but it hasn't been working yet. We'll see if it can happen. Now, the we are going to step away and prepare for game three, and we're going to see a break in a second. But on the other side, the State Farm Analyst Desk will break down game two, so stay tuned. Yeah, I'm married. Doesn't matter. You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis? Hey, do they ever ask you what you're wearing? Uh, yeah. Red sweater, button-down shirt. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
Welcome back to the LCS, where we are standing on the precipice of another 3-0 sweep. This one will come at the hands of FlyQuest over Evil Geniuses. So we have done the only thing we can think to do here in the LCS, and that's bring a literal world champion onto the desk <laughs> to help us make sense of it. Azale, thank you for joining us, my friend. 2-0. You, you, you're swinging in here. Give me your initial impressions of the series so far. How, how are you taking it all in? Uh, FlyQuest is uh, is clapping them up, James. Uh, I've got to say, you know, they are looking really, really good. I, I was loving the Swain pick in game number one. I think that they looked absolutely dominant in game number two. Ignar, you know, was really performing start to finish on the Gragas. You know, everything from the level one invade to his team fighting later on has been really, really good. And and FlyQuest is, is looking pretty much airtight. Like, it feels like, you know, this is all but wrapped up unless EG can figure something out really fast. Yeah, and I, I think uh, EG's comp was... It's like the full Vistaya comp with the with the uh, thematically. Uh, yeah, it's great thematically with Hecarim in the top lane. Feels like you kind of want to go in uh, and alt someone back or hit multiple people back in your team with the fear being able to split people up the wall as well. Uh, but they just fell behind so far so fast in this game that they never really got a chance at five v fives. And it's not like uh, FlyQuest comp was going to be bad in five v fives either. Yeah, but I think FlyQuest did a really good job. I mean, I'm loving that GP ban in 1, 2, 3. I mean, on blue side, EG is going to be blinding their top anyway, so I figured they'd be taking GP early. FlyQuest recognized that. And then I think the biggest thing was FlyQuest's uh, uh, Gragas pick in the oh, fourth yeah. pick because that also set them up for their level 1. And this is a classic Rakan Gragas. Any support that can jump over the wall, you have to shift down so you have vision. So Ignar's able to jump over this wall, basically wait for his body slam cooldown, and then his team moves in while he's just kind of like the hidden ace in the back. And I, I've absolutely loved Ignar's play this game in this series so far. He's so good about playmaking. And there's a period of time where he was getting some criticism. Uh, people saying, uh, you know, there's an interview with Vulcan saying that he spent too much time looking for hero plays. I personally still think he's just an incredible player, always able to influence the team. Here, roaming all the way up from bot side to top, goes for the flash body slam to set the Woo! kills up. He He's so good, and he has such a deep champion pool. This is what makes him so great. Is like, I, is this the first Gragas support of the LCS? I, th I think it is, this split. Um, and he is he just has such a master in the champion. The hard part is not the flash body slams, it's the ults. Look at how perfect this ult placement is to knock the Zaya right up into his jungler, forcing the ult right away. And then continues to play this fight out correctly, sidestepping Rakan, engage, and then setting Turtle up to be yeah, uh, now watch a monster. Turtle. Yeah, Turtle's such a good job kiting on Ash. Tur Turtle is honestly just, it feels like unstoppable on Ash lately. <laughs> like he yeah. is, he has not lost the game on the champion. It feels like he's able to, to kite out and play these fights so incredibly well. He's been on point with the Hawk shots, on point with the arrows. Uh, I really do think that Turtle is playing some of the best League of Legends of his career, but playoffs has been really exciting for me, you know, so far, you know, throughout the first two days, we've been getting new picks in both series. Yesterday, we caught a couple of the Ziggs games. Today, we've gotten the Hecarim. You know, we got to see the Swain. Now we're seeing the, the Gragas support. I do think that, you know, 10 16 there is the opportunity to to expand the the champion pool quite a lot as far as the pro meta goes and i'm glad to see people kind of dipping their toes in the water as far as as far as that is concerned and i hope that we're going to continue to see an evolution from here to see even more new champions coming out and and being you know specifically used unfortunately for turtle the next two kills that came in happened at like 15 20 so they don't count to these like uh, golden kills and assists at 15 but he was 5 1 and 2 at 16 minutes i believe it was a turtle was absolutely monstrous this game yeah he was popping off uh to say the least uh but i but what i love about this and you call out the the unique picks that we've seen over the last two days azale is that a number of our teams are coming in with very clear strategies and it is netting them victories in these best of fives and so question remains how will the adjustments be made over the coming days to respond to what teams have seen so far as we get a look at a few of the team fights breaking Solo! out this one far more dominant for FlyQuest in game two than game one god that was the best morty i think i've ever seen it was it's just four man morty to set up the the, the four man stun for the syndra it was it was incredible uh, and he had a great game outside that play uh, solo has been quietly dominating this series Quietly dominating the series. Another player who's been quietly dominating the series, Santorin. This guy has yet to die across the two games. He's sporting a 30 KDA, 100% kill participation in the first 15 minutes. He's involved in everything. Yeah, but he only has one kill, James. What's up with that? Is the guy even trying? I mean, one, one kill zero, over two games? Come on, Santorin, get it together. It's playoffs. He's Stop bullying my... 29. Stop <laughs> bullying my vote for all pro jungler. Yeah. Uh, the thing that's impressive is he plays frontliners and always 
gets out alive. Like in in some of those replays, you'll see him with like 200 health, still playing front line correctly. He is not a KDA player. You know, like this is not some inflated KDA of him playing Graves and kind of like getting some damage in fights. He he is in the front line, starting a lot of these fights, getting very low, and still setting his team up correctly. And it's not just in game. He got a Trundle ban. Like this is not a really <laughs> bannable champion right now. It's it's fine. But the way Santorin plays it, it's such a problem they had to just ban it. And this is Sven Skarin who plays carry junglers, which can counter Trundle. So I thought that was a nice like nod to Santorin being like, you're really good, so be a little less good this game. But it didn't really work. Volibear was great. I love how giddy probably gets over a trundle ban. Uh, let's talk. <laughs> so let's <funny>. talk. <laughs> let's talk best of five pressures here because uh, again, uh, we're looking at another possible clean sweep like we were yesterday. Um, for players on the side of Evil Geniuses, uh, getting side selection again, uh, but only having so much time in between games to really identify what went wrong, probably I'll come to you first. What would be your approach in the given amount of time between games? What is actually solvable? So you can't go over what's going wrong in these best of fives, especially when there are stomps like this. I mean, if the enemy jungler is 30 KDA, you, you can't analyze what you're really doing wrong. You need to try to figure out what your strengths were. It looks like they started this uh, this week going, all right, who needs our carry? We're going to carry through that. So this is where they either need to double down, go really hard in that, or they need to take a pivot. And they need to go, all right, well, bang one us playoffs in spring. Let's play around Bang. Let's try to get Huni a pick that he's going to be safe on and play through that. Because it's it's not about, like, this is going wrong and this is going wrong. It has to be we need to reinvent what we thought because we were wrong at the start of the day. Azale, which uh, which of those two options would you choose? Uh, you double I mean, down I, or you I pivot? Feel like, I feel like you kind of have to double down. It's just like the style that, that Huni plays, right? I think you, you've already kind of, you know, sold the farm. You know, you're, you're off <laughs> on the road. You don't really have any, any more choice, man. You know, they can't undo putting Huni in. And I think when, when you put in Huni, you took out Jizuke. You took away your mid lane as that huge carry threat. Bang has always been the more passive guy. You know, you can't have both your solo lanes you're kind of sitting back. And I think they, they've gone all in on, here on Huni. Um you know, and and it's tough because if you're if you're getting banned out on your on your priority champions like Rumble and GP both got banned out this time he goes to the Hecarim again. But Mordekaiser seems like an, an incredible answer. They forced him into building full tank essentially. You know, he had a Hex Drinker and uh, and an adaptive helm, and he's just getting slammed by Mordekaiser. So uh, I do want to see them double down on it, but maybe going towards something like a Jax or a Camille or even a Fiora. I mean, you're there down 2-0. Uh, let's 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 try something new. Fiora got Our, buffed. So let's bring yeah. it out. I, I mean, final thoughts? It, yeah, it's just the thing is, FlyQuest is so good that I don't think this is like a, a one thing can fix it problem. Yeah. I mean, th they are one of the most solid teams in, in the entirety of North America. So I, I think this is a 30 and a handshake. EG is going lower bracket real quick. There it is. Doom and gloom from Mark's perspective, but perhaps doubling down on the Huni carry is the answer for Evil Geniuses. FlyQuest, our one win away from knocking EG to the lower bracket. We'll see if Evil Geniuses can keep the series alive when we return for game three.